Hey, good morning. Welcome to Bronze Porch Homestead. So it's been a couple of uh, busy days. It is a Wednesday and Nick, our beekeeper is here. I won't be able to stay long, but I did want to film a little bit about what's going on. And the reason why I can't stay long, unfortunately, or do this whole beekeeping experience is because I am actually doing pantry work today. It's a Wednesday. I wasn't there last week. Um, I have one of my colleagues is picking me up in five minutes. And, um, and then I'm, we're going to harvest at the keeper's house. And then that harvest goes to the pantry where I volunteer and you know help distribute food so as of now I'm gonna sneak in a couple of um, clips of the beekeeping and show you how they're going to begin before I head out of here So they're getting ready to do a mite count and that yellow that yellow thing there that cup he's gonna take a handful of bees and he's gonna put it in the white part of the cup there's some kind of alcohol in there so yes the bees are going to die however he's gonna shake it up and then when he shakes it up he's gonna count the mites on the bottom See the very bottom where it's clear? That's where he's gonna count the mites. And that bag in there, it holds the treatment for the mites. It's some kind of acid that starts with the letter F. I, I can't pronounce the, the acid. But anyway, that is embedded in a substrate, which is biodegradable, compostable. And then that substrate with the acid goes in between the boxes, which then penetrates the actual bee, the actual wax. So it'll, it goes through the wax is what he's saying. And then that kills whatever mites are in here. Mites are detrimental to beehives. They can kill an entire beehive because they reproduce in there. How do mites get into the beehive? They can get in by jumping on bees when they're in the flowers um, and then they reproduce that way. So mites like anything else, like anything else that, you know, transports itself onto other insects and that's how insects get around, uh, it's the same thing. You, m mites ha have a little reddish head, like the size of a pin drop. And so that's how you can tell that it's mites. Okay, so I know all of that <laughs> because this morning when Nick came in, he's the beekeeper, I asked him all these questions. And so because I'm not gonna be here to experience all of this, I wanted to ask him what the yellow little thing was, which he took, which is right there. That's what he's gonna do, grab a handful. And then, uh, then he showed me that packet there. This packet can be ordered through any beekeeping site where you buy your materials. Actually, all this equipment you buy at a beekeeping site online, which is what we ended up doing. But Nick is sharing his. I am not wearing a suit, which is why I'm back here filming. Uh, so that's David and Nick over there that you see. And then Nick is explaining to David what is going on. On top of all that, we also have a nice urban sounds to complete the picture. So see, he's looking for um, some mites, but really the way to do it is by grabbing a few and, and putting them in that container. I do want to keep as far as possible. Um, there are bees around, and even though they don't sting, I am not wearing a suit. Uh, they are coming out of the hive because now we're opening up the hive. Um, so that we just want to make sure that um, 
that I'm safe, you know. But yeah, now he's looking at every frame that you see here. Going to check things out. So that's really why uh, Nick the beekeeper is here, and that's so to, to make sure that we have a healthy hive. Yes, he's looking at them. Eventually, he's just going to grab a few and put them in that container that you see there. Later on, we can um, see what the results were. And then I can update. You know, one good thing about working with Nick, this beekeeper, I'm so glad that um, after all the research that I did on other beekeepers here in New York City that are willing to, you know, travel from one borough to the next, is how thorough he is. Um, no plug intended, it's just an experience that we're having, that we're sharing, and I actually am budgeting him in for next year because his mentorship and his bee, beekeeping, um, you know, knowledge and his years of experience uh, is just—it's just incredible for us, and we're fortunate. And we have so much to learn still, you know. Every time he comes here, I feel like. He's coming here for the first time again, but very, very thorough and he treats the, the equipment like it's, you know, like it's his, like it's part of him. So know who is going to be helping you when you have a um, beekeeping set up in your place. Uh, you know, you really want to be able to count and trust the person that you're going to be working with. You also want to have good communication between you and the beekeeper. Wonderful sounds of urban homesteading. You got a plane overhead. You got some serious machinery going on next to me sorry guys but real life here
first time we're using the smoker and that is because the bees are not crazy about what's going on today. So uh, Nick just finished lighting up, I guess, you know, some twigs or something. So they did that beehive there and now they're going to go on to this beehive. Got to treasure this moment. It's, it's, it's unreal that we live in such a very dense populated community where we have so much industry going around us, development, and we're in a backyard, small, next to a chicken coop with 14 hens and two beehives. It's, it's not the, it's uh, not what one would expect in a, in a New York City uh, Bronx community. So oh, that's David doing the smoker because the bees seem a little bit agitated. This seems like the part where he's putting the bees into that uh, little container that I had mentioned earlier. Okay folks, I'm gonna have to head out here. Um, 
I guess David and Nick will film me later on. But at least we got this far and see how big. Wow, see how the bees are going crazy over there? Woo. Yeah, I can see why they needed that smoker. Well, it's the end of the day almost. It's about dinner time. And I'm back from doing community service and David is uh, resting. And they ended up treating the beehives for mites. I believe the beekeeper said that 10% of this one here had mites. The other one, he says he believes the queen has ceased. So, not sure. I haven't talked to the beekeeper after I left here this morning. But David says that he thinks that the queen is no longer in existence because of the low production of honey uh, on the smaller one after we harvested. So... Uh, the next time he comes, I guess he'll give us more information on that. And uh, we are going into the winter, even though it doesn't seem like it, we are. So, in the meantime, I'm here out here in the evening while the rice is cooking. And I'm gonna let the little rabbits out. I have not let Holly and Charlie out. Um today i always let them out it's just lately they go out for like a half an hour and then they go back in so they used to stay hours outside i guess they got used to being in the coop for a while the wonderful industrial developing sounds <laughs> of 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 city life is uh actually um gone I forgot to lock the gate here. And Holly's out, so I'm gonna end it like that. And um, see you the next time.